Good day, everyone. I'm Jane Onyinechi Ikeizi. At the risk of sounding redundant, I would like to appeal to the common sense of every Nigerian, particularly those of Biafran descent domiciled in southeastern Nigeria, to please boycott the Nigerian general elections of 2019 coming up next week, the 16th of February. There's a running theme in any video that I do about Nigeria, and that is mediocrity. For whatever reason, the so-called giant of Africa has people who have decided to accept mediocrity. Bob Marley, in one of his songs, said, emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. And that's what we need to do in that country. People need to emancipate themselves from mental slavery. I speak to people you know, um, in Nigeria and young people and I encourage them to boycott the elections. And for those that don't understand why, I ask them to give me one good reason why they should vote. And all they have to say are negative things about the country, complaints about the candidates running. What are your options? Atiku, Buhari slash Jibril, whomever you think he is. You're voting in the same people, essentially. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Why settle for mediocrity? Since the inception of that country, since the birth of that country, there has been a steady decline of the economy as well as social degradation. If I stay here and give you the litany of reasons I have for why you should boycott the 2019 general elections, this video would be exceptionally long. I enumerated many reasons in an article on usafricaonline.com. I gave a litany of reasons why Nigeria is a failed state. Why don't we try doing something different for a change? The condition of Nigeria right now is damned if you do and damned if you don't. What have you achieved from years of voting? The academic institutions are not only declining, but they have completely declined. The healthcare institutions are almost non-existent, which is why, of course, whenever wealthy people or politicians themselves you know, have need for treatment, they travel abroad, while the masses become more and more impoverished. With the vast mineral resources that country has, still there is no electricity. Pollution is rampant, particularly in oil-producing states. Corporations are allowed to do whatever they choose, whereas the people, the everyday person, has absolutely no recourse whatsoever. It is absolutely opprobrious to vote in people who do not mean well for you. What do they have to show? What do they have to show to tell you that they have earned your vote. Nothing. I'm in touch with people in Nigeria. I speak to people on a, on a, on a daily basis every day. And what I hear is a pot of soup, you know, just a basic pot of soup costs upwards of 2,000 to 3,000 Naira. And some people are not even getting paid a salary for their work. How are they feeding? In one of Fela's songs, he said, suffering and smiling. Many years ago, uh, there was an article here in the United States where Nigeria was listed as number one of the happiest people in the world. All that happens in that country is suffering and smiling. Or like Igbo people will say, uh, Masho wa George. So you're suffering, but you just put a smile on your face. There's nothing wrong with that, but you don't have to continue to accept that suffering. 
you can choose to change your condition. And I'm not saying it's easy. And I know, for, you know, there are people there who are saying, you're in the US, you know, what rights have you to dictate what happens here? You're not here, you don't understand the situation. I am fully aware of the situation because the situation in Nigeria failed me. And that is the reason why I'm here in the US. But that's a video for another day. I am fully aware of how the institutions in Nigeria operate. I am whom I am today, and I achieved what I have achieved today because I'm here in the United States. So for me, it is very sad that there are people in my same circumstances, but because they're in Nigeria, they are not able to achieve as much as I have simply because of geographic uh, region. So because they happen to be in that country, their lights are dimmed, their progress halted, their academics halted. Some people have even died from lack of medical treatment in that country. Mortuaries are filled with people I hear of people who are sick but have no money to go to a hospital because they know the bill is going to be too high and they have to choose between eating and treating themselves. And they just end up staying home, trying to treat themselves until they die. And what about those who manage to gather money enough to begin treatment in hospitals? When they're treated, they're not discharged because they owe money, so the hospital holds them hostage. That is the kind of country that we're talking about here. What changes have been made by these politicians? And for those of you who act unconcerned and say, I'm not a politician, it's not my duty to, you know, I'm just going to vote and let the politicians handle it. Life itself is politics. Life is politics. When you go to the market, and you try to buy tomatoes and one day is 500 naira and the next day 550 or 600 or more all that is affected by politics the decisions that are made in Aso Rock affect you on a daily daily basis so try something different exercise some civil disobedience there is nothing even disobedient about it because if you think about it Voting is a right. You have a right to choose not to vote. Just stay home. And for those of you who think it's not a right but a privilege, I won't argue that right now, but you have a right to turn down a privilege and still refuse to vote. If you disagree with the tenets of a group of people, that's fine. If you disagree with what one man says about Nigeria, if he tells you don't vote, that's okay. But let common sense prevail and ask yourselves, what benefit do I derive from voting? I have a video that I um, posted, you know, back in November when I was showing, um, my trip to the voting booth to exercise my rights to vote here uh, in the United States. And the point of that video was to delineate a difference. I walked into that poll site knowing that my vote would matter. My vote counted. Do you have that same guarantee when you go out to vote in Nigeria? The world is watching. I was listening to BBC News, you know, this entire week, BBC radio, and they have people on ground monitoring, you know, that are going to be monitoring the election. They're monitoring the entire process. Now, I'm not in their head. I don't know exactly what it is they're seeing because the situation is so bad that it can't possibly make sense from anybody who comes from a civilized society. Everyone has something to benefit from an election. 
so people will watch. Ask yourself what kind of message you want to send to these foreigners that are in Nigeria monitoring the election. Do you want to send a message to them that you're sheep being led to slaughter and that you accept mediocrity? Or do you want to send a message to them and let your silence speak volumes? Send a message to them that says, I do not accept this process. I'm tired of being maligned, discriminated against. I'm tired of not being considered a human being. I'm tired of being punished for speaking up. What kind of message do you want to send to them? Because the world is watching. Nigerians are known around the world as being vibrant, loud. You know, we always want to announce our presence. And when I say we, you know, I'm using it generally speaking because when you go abroad, um, you know, everybody is a Nigerian, basically from that region. What is there to be proud about? No electricity, no proper institutions. Some people that tell you they are graduates, when they speak to you or write to you, you question where they graduated from. But it's not their fault, it's actually the institutions. We have institutions where you could pay your way through school. We have institutions in Nigeria where, where teachers are not paid, therefore schools are always closed. So a four-year degree ends up taking 10 years or more. Why? but the children of the elite have the opportunity to travel abroad for a proper education, come back and just take over from where their parents stopped and suppress everyone else in the process. So when we ask you to boycott the general elections in 2019, we're doing that because we care. We're doing that because we do not accept mediocrity. We're doing that because we know what we are worth. And let us show the world what we are worth. What we as Biafrans want is a right to self-determination. And that can be achieved by beginning with a referendum. International law gives us that right. It is not a privilege. So please, let us try something different and show the world that we are not insane. Boycott the 2019 general elections. Thank you.